So you want to see in the dark? Gather round, children. Gather round. All right. All right, so first, we're, we're, we're going to talk in this one about the... Yep. Civil night, War night technology. Vision, yeah, night vision mounted on, on weapons and, yep. and how to use it without a laser. So we're talking about night vision devices actually mounted on, on uh, rifles. So uh, we have a fine example of, of something that is uh, no longer in service, the PBS-4. Something I was issued back. I believe uh, they call that an antique. It probably is, just like yeah, me. That historical that, artifact. Right. That thing's older than me. Um, that that thing first went into service in 1976. Right. This one here probably isn't older than you, but it's, it's probably been around for a while. <laughs> um, they worked great for what they, uh, you know, what they were intended to do. They were the best thing we had at the time. You know, so they, you know, they did a they did a pretty good job. You know, they were still kind of a pain, but you know, like I said, we didn't have any other night vision scopes or, or anything like that. So, with the PBS-4, I mean, as a dedicated night vision scope, basically, you know, you're you're dedicating that specific gun to night, night vision. I mean, pretty much, you're not really. I mean, the the PBS-4. It was kind of like a day slash night scope. But it had it this cover really work. On, the, on the front, and we could use it during, yeah. during the daytime. But it was, the thing was, it was, I mean, most of the time the intent was it was put on. You were going to do some sort of night operation, you know, a raid or an ambush or something right. like that. So the idea was, you know, you're patrolling around, you know, from point A to point B, maybe during the daytime or late up on a patrol base, planning for your your nighttime raids and things of that nature. So, yep. you know, the idea there was a hey, you could use it during the day but it's primarily you know our mission was was at night when we were rangers and and uh so that was the thing but there weren't enough it wasn't like everybody had one of these either yeah you, know, you might have a couple of these you know maybe one per squad the machine guns would have have these on them mm -hmm. and uh and whatnot and it was you know they may not have been the most precise and, and accurate things because it yeah. wasn't always as zero as possible I mean, for but it was better than looking up the butt of a cat or eating a bag of carrots. Right. Yeah, it I was mean, better than, you know, putting, you know, glow tape on the back of your front sight, you know. For all intent and purpose, you're you're saying this gun is what I'm going to use in the dark. And maybe you're sacrificing, uh, at least with the, the so-called day-night scopes, you're, you're sacrificing um, some of the performance during the day um, so that you have something you can still use at night. And um, you know that that kind of became a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, and, and the military, probably what mid to to late two thousands. Early, kinda. yeah, early to mid. We had the PBS seventeen, which was mm -hmm. great. And I PBS mean, PBS tens. Those of us that cut our teeth on these and some other things. Yep. When we got issued those seventeens, that was amazing. It was awesome. The PBS ten was it was a really good attempt at what you know what they were trying to do. It just didn't right. really catch on. Um, as well, you know. So transition, pretty quick was the transition in the mid two thousands to the clip ons. Yeah. So clip ons, um, uh, CNVD. It's a clip on night vision device, and that's pretty much the only thing that the military is buying today. Um, most of them are available for uh, civilian purchase, uh, U.S. citizens. Um, but uh, clip ons are basically just that. It's a a clip on night vision device that. You've got a host scope uh, day optic that you're just going to use all day, and then when uh, the lights go out at night, you can literally take your night vision device that you've been carrying around in your pack and out, clip out it on, back and clip it right on. So now you've got the same dope, essentially the the same uh, optic that you've been used uh, using during the day, um, and you know, the same reticle, everything, but you're just seeing it through night vision. And uh, There's, there'll be a little bit of a point of impact shift, but maybe, um, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Um, some of them have them, some of them don't. Um, They're usually, if there is going to be a point of, aim, point of impact shift, it's going to be no more than one MOA for the mil spec clip ons. There's there's some uh, some clip ons out there that are uh, uh, cheaper, more commercial grade stuff, uh, but generally speaking, for a good clip-on sight that's going to be reliable that you're going to be able to uh, use on multiple calibers, heavy calibers, all the way up to and including 50 BMG. Uh, you know, the military right now, they, like, like I said, they're only buying clip-on sights mm -hmm. and they're only buying them from three places. Uh, Knights Armament Corporation, uh, this is a Knights Armament PBS-30, um, L3, and FLIR. Um, 
basically if you're clip on if, if you're looking at a clip on and it doesn't have one of those three names on it you're buying commercial grade stuff that in all reality is not mil spec it's not going to hold zero um you know the the tube may uh, come out of collimation and that's actually the the trick i mean a lot of guys ask me you know all right well you guys sell dedicated night vision scopes but they're maybe half the price of, of a clip-on site why is a clip-on site so expensive <clears throat> Well, these things are collimated at the factory. They use, uh, for the most part, caddy dioptric lens systems, which is basically a series of mirrors. So, you know, light comes in through the objective, it's gonna bounce off of some mirrors in the back, um, and then come back forward in the, the lens again, bounce off of mirrors there, and then go back into the tube. So you're literally, you're amplifying that light more before it gets into the tube uh, than just coming in through a normal lens. And then uh, from there, the, the system is actually collimated. So they, they call that like a unity collimation um, so that it's essentially, I can take it off of this gun, put it onto another gun with a completely different caliber, completely different host optic, and I'm gonna have the same results. Uh, no more than one MOA mechanical point of aim, point of impact right. shift, if any. Yeah, so They're very precisely made. Though. Yeah. You know, they have to be, and they have They're, to be... It's a time-consuming process, and right. it's very expensive to make. And then the tube inside is shock-isolated so that it doesn't get damaged from... Exactly. The paper, it also allows the user recoil. to um, utilize more magnification with the, the, their day optic than, say, a dedicated optic. Most of these topped out at about 6x, whereas some of these good systems, you can go up to 20x. Um, yeah. And like a PVS-30 under pretty decent light conditions, you could probably shoot a guy at 1,000 yards. Now that's that that's going off the manual. Um, I'll be honest, my you know my experience with clip-on sights, um, even with a high power um, optic. I mean, you got like a Mark VI here from Loophold. Um, this is one of the best you know day optics available. Um, and then the PVS30. This is one of the best high power capable um, uh, clip-on sights available. Um, this is actually what. The vast majority of, uh, of of SOCOM, JSOC, USOC guys are running right now. Um, my experience is, even though on a night with say full moon, clear skies, and you know Mother Nature is smiling on us, I'm still not going to take my optic. Even though this guy's a three and a half to eighteen, I'm not going to take this past ten power because I still want the tube to be able to pull as much. Uh, light as possible to use for both the magnified image and resolution. I still want to be able to have PID at you know a, a 10 power uh, uh, optic. So you know, I for for me for observation, and and this is just my personal experience with them. Um, you know, a lot of guys I talk to kind of the same idea. So even though the capability on paper, you know, we all know that the manual says one thing, but in reality. You know, you're you're using it differently. Um, I'm still going to keep that guy at about 10 power, and while maybe that means that I need to get in closer, it's like, all right, you know what? It's nighttime. It's I nighttime. Night vision. Yeah, that's we're, what this is all about. We're using the technology to our advantage. Right. I I can now get in closer. So, you know, technically, yeah, maybe I can take you know a, a kill shot at a thousand, but I'm going to probably get into. 500 or so because 500 I at night might as well be 2,000 well. exactly. a day. Exactly. So, you know, with from, from a civilian side or a law enforcement side, um, you know, okay, the, the dedicated night vision scope, it's going to give you uh, the ability to, to be able to get magnification at night. It's a great system. Um, and, you know, it, it's not inexpensive, but compared to a clip on site, it, it is. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're going out hunting at night, hey, why not dedicate a gun to, you know, to night vision? Because you're, you're not going out on a, a four-day recce where you've got one weapon system that you're going to hump up and down the mountains because, uh, you know, ounces equal pounds and pounds equal pain. Chances are if you can afford 10-3 night vision, you've probably got a whole slew of rifles sitting yeah. in your safe anyway. Yeah, I mean, but for a recce mission, you know, uh, and law enforcement does go out on recce. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, the BORTAC guys, you know, our, our brothers down at the border, those guys will go out for several days at a time watching the, the trails for the, the uh, guys coming up from the, the south. So, 
at that point, yeah, having the ability to, to save weight and size and be able to pull this out of the pack, you know, makes perfect sense. If you're a law enforcement agency, you got multiple snipers, multiple weapon systems um, for various types of targets, um, you know, clip on site, it's the way to go. Yeah, you're, the cost of admissions more. But, but they're uh, highly specialized pieces yeah. of gear. Exactly. So. Well, and exactly. the thing is, is th that's not the kind of gear that you have to buy for every person on the SWAT team. Right. You know, only a few guys are going to need that. You know, the price of that, it's really not that much more expensive than a good set of, you know, binocular night vision goggles that, yeah. that the assaulters get too. Yeah. You know, I so mean, you're looking it seems at like it, but... Starting around eight grand for the good mil spec stuff that's reliable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in some cases though, depending on what you're looking at, could go up to, to 12, I mean... 14 for yeah. an unfilmed white phosphor yeah, system. Yeah, right. tube options and things like yeah, that. different tubes. But what you're also getting is, is out of a high end, you know, like like the PBS thirty has really good glass, and mm -hmm. you know they can you can have it with a with an unfilmed white phosphor tube. So as you talk about positive identification and being facial recognition and things like that, right. even though maybe you're a police you know marksman, and you know a hundred yards is your you know your average window you know between fifty and two hundred, yep. you know that may not seem like very far, but when you're when you really have to know who it is you're looking at. Having that quality piece of glass and and you know quality well made optic makes all the difference in the world, especially when it comes to that when that you're recognition a, of the target. When you're a cop, you know, especially in today's political climate where it seems like uh, everybody but Republicans is against the the five zero, you know, every bullet you launch has a lawyer attached to it, and you got to be able to articulate in court. I mean, if you're a police sniper and you're, you know, you're having to take a, a shot at a suspect, uh, you, know, you know, you're practically going to need to be able to identify the type of hair gel they put in that morning. I mean, your PID is is so important. Um, hell, even the military these days, you know, every every kill really has to be, yeah. yeah. So, so what's this? This is the last real option and this is more for guys who are running a carbine setup but uh, either don't have an IR laser or don't want to utilize an IR laser to stay um, passive um, so you have a system that mounts behind a uh, you know a low or no parallax red dot sight um, and this just happens to be a aimpoint T2 on a uh, Knight's Armament um, skyscraper mount with a 14 and it we have our I guess patented TM14 on a um, aim point twist mount. So during the day, you want to shoot your carbine as you normally would. You, you do so, and then at night you can you can actually detach this off your helmet and fit it onto your rifle, right. all in the span of about five seconds if you know what you're doing. Right. So some yeah. guys will opt to do something like this if, let's say, you hunt and you hunt out of a stand, out of a tree stand. And they'll wear it on their head to get to where they're going. Yeah, to the walk start, to their get up in the tree and then take it off. You know, because once you're sitting up there, you get your eyes get pretty dark adapted anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can scan with it. You know, one thing to be aware of, even though these things are auto gated and these all have you know some sort of in night vision setting. You know, it's I, a I recommend dot I recommend right the guys right. to not leave both of these on at the same time. You know, so either turn this off, turn your dot off. While you're, you know, using it to scan, and then if you think you're, you're getting ready to have to shoot, turn it back on, or yep. make sure you turn this off when you're not using it, especially because that dot, even though, you know, it has the auto gating, which is a self-preservation feature, you can over time burn a pinhole um, spot in in your. We've seen so it. Be aware Customers have sent in right. PBS 14s that uh, they've left weapon mounted, and they go out for a hunt all night. They've got their goggle mounted on the gun. They've got. You know, and, and like you're saying, the, the auto gating it's it's basically something that is is helping the tube stay uh, uh, new and you know kept from damage um, when you're moving from one type of environment to another. When you've got uh, say, um, you know, if you're wearing it on your head and it's dark out, and uh, all of a sudden you start taking effective fire, you gotta get your team off the street. You kick in the first door on the street there. There could be lights on on the other side. It's not going to destroy your tube. It's not going to harm the tube as you're moving through that environment right. and uh, and and taking the house and you know setting up a, a strong point from there. But 
if you're staying in a lit environment or you've got a static light that is constantly being shown directly at the tube in the same place, you're going to cause some damage. I mean, right. we would come off mission and, uh, uh, you know, from using IR lasers and we'd have like squiggles in our, in our tubes. And that's minor light damage that's completely uh, repairable, um, doing just a light purge on the, on the system. But that's because, you know, our lasers are moving around as we're moving around and, and taking down the target. With this, when you've got that, that aim point, that, that red dot or an EOTech reticle or anything that's constantly being shown in that same spot, you're going to do some damage. Even if it's only for a minute because it's concentrated, mm -hmm. um, you'll, you'll leave a faint mark. And I mean, if you leave it on for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, um, you're running the risk of having some more permanent damage. If you leave it on all night, you'll have a black spot or a black EOTech reticle or whatever where that was. Well, the chances are the EOTech won't last all night. <laughs> but, oh. You know. that, yeah, so, and, so the bottom line is, we're not saying don't do this, but be aware of yeah, you know, as, the potential issues. Um, we've, you know, we've talked about this in other videos. It's not our first choice, right? You know, the laser and a helmet mounted is our first choice, but but if for I certain applications, up, there's nothing wrong with with putting a PBS 14 on it, especially in a hunting environment. It's not like you're going to be burning through mag after mag right. and, and causing potential recoil damage. I hope so. And at that point, you know, we, we hope well, hey, you got 200 anything. hogs out there. Right. You know, it, then it may be worth the, the chances you take. And at but, that point, you put on like a Night Stalker tripod or something like that, and you've got your selected field of fire. Mm -hmm. You know that this is where my gun is going to be pointing. This is where I'm, I'm looking right. with, with the goggle. So if it's cantilevered off the front of my face, you know, I'm I'm gonna eventually be putting neck strain and back strain and things like that. I don't care how you know if you got a volcano neck, you're still gonna feel it if you're wearing night vision all night. Right. So yeah, I mean, like you were saying, I'm just gonna walk to my to my stand or wherever I'm I'm gonna hunt from, take it off, put it on the gun, and now with the aim point or whatever optic turned off, my night vision is gonna see right through that empty uh, uh, optic anyway. Right. So I'm not losing anything. And then once I'm ready to take the shot, turn on the, the reticle and uh, yeah, yeah, and then take the shot and then turn it back off. Um, one thing that y'all notice is that PVS-14 is behind the optic, whereas the clip-on that we were showing before, uh, you were putting in front. And we get a lot of, or, I'm sorry, a lot of uh, customers calling saying, okay, so can I put my PVS-14 in front of my ACOG or my red dot or something like that? The answer is, yes, you can. Will it work? No, it won't. Physically, it's gonna stay on there. You'll look through the optic and you're gonna see an image, but because your point of aim- not collimated. Yeah, right. because it's not collimated to go with it, your point of aim and point of impact shift is gonna be pretty big. Oh, um, and they're entirely different types of lenses. Yeah. The lens assembly here is made for you to look through it with your eye. The lens assembly on that PBS 30 over there is designed to be looked at through, through a magnified optic. So exactly. if you took that off and held it up to your eye, you'd be like, "Well, this is this is lame. This yeah. is weak." It's like I'm looking you know, through a tube before right. I you know you're gonna see this tiny reach. little screen in front of you because it's it's just the the that's not it's a built it's for that. focal length adapter. Right. And then because of that it's it's not a flat lens. It's not going to be collimated. And you know, and I I did a quick experiment one time, and it was way off at like. 25 yards yeah it was a way well you're off. introducing parallax you're forcing a actually lot of parallax, parallax right. because you're introducing a second optical plane and you know it, yeah. it's just it's not designed to do that because even red dots um, and we're know. talking about just a standard issue PBS 14 there are systems and replacement lenses that right. people have developed right. You know that that do mitigate that and make this that make that more of a viable option yeah but taking um, this and and doing that up. That's, yeah. you know, you're going to look through it and it's going to, you're going to get an image. You're going to see what looks to be, you know, something that's usable, but you break that shot and uh, you're, you're, you're going to notice a, a big difference. You're going to miss. So there's right. definitely a use for weapon mounting a PBS-14, but in all reality, it's not something that we overly recommend, um, you know, unless you've got a very specific way that, that you're, you know, using the goggle light like hunting and you're going to use it to walk to where you're going and then you're just going to be able to sit there on a tripod and have a, a certain field of fire. So hopefully we've answered 
all your questions, cleared up any misconceptions or, uh, you know. Or created more questions. Or, or created more questions. Anyway. Thanks for listening. Yep.